Hey everybody, my name is Chase Pipes and you're watching Chasing History, brought to you by Airheads.com and Smoky Mountain Relic Room. And dad, dude, we're in Montana, this is so cool. So we're here with my buddy, Eamon Yeager. Eamon, dude, thank you so much well, anytime, for having anytime. us out to your site, dude. Absolutely. So here's what Eamon's doing is, is he's coming out and he's identified a dinosaur site and he's gonna be getting it prepped up and ready to go and to excavate down into the ground to expose some dinosaur stuff. So and talk to us about, where, you know, where are we at? What are we looking for? What formation is this? All that okay. good Cool. Stuff. So we are we are in the Two Medicine Formation of Northwest Montana. It's a Campanian Cretaceous formation. So we find a lot of really odd dinosaurs because it's mostly inland. It wasn't along the ocean shore from the Great Western Waterway. So when you're looking for dinosaurs out here, you want to look for just little small piles of just dinosaur bone. And you see them pretty rough coming out of the ground. They've been weathered really heavily. Roots have grown through them. But it's a good sign that if you go further underground, there's gonna be better preservation and better things, you know, underneath of it. So what you really want to look for is these big chunks of bone that have very open cell structure and you can see exactly that it's bone so and then you look for where in the surrounding area where it could be leaching from and you can see where we've started to uncover a bone that's popping out of the ground here yeah see okay. this right here and and, and and here's something that i've been wanting to to get across to a lot of people is 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 you know just you know how much of this stuff is on the surface that's getting oh yeah that's getting weird out. oh absolutely you'll find a lot of this stuff on the surface and you know, if you don't get to it in time, it just weathers out and just gets destroyed. You can see that the roots start to overtake it. Right. Um, water and snow will start to destroy it. And so you have to be pretty quick on it. And otherwise, you know, it's, it's not going to, it's not going to be collectible after a while. Right, so. exactly. And you know, that's an important thing, you know, to do is, is to get out here and to collect this stuff before it gets destroyed. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. and that's what's so great about having guys like you out here hunting these fields, looking for spots and layers and, and grabbing this bone and saving it oh, before yeah. it gets Absolutely. gone. And, and just another, you know, five years or so, this could be completely gone. Yeah. Cause see, here's, here's, here's something that you guys have got to keep in mind is that you know dinosaur fossils aren't rare okay Th this is a huge country that we live in there are fossils all over the place all right you know you're talking about species that live for millions and millions and millions of years you know and there are a lot of fossils present you know so there's so much of it that gets exposed that it's important to go out and to collect this stuff because if you don't it's going to do come here check this out L look what's happening see how this bone right here is all breaking away the roots are going through it it's all exploding into pieces and like Eamon was saying like Eamon was saying in another five years this will be gone you know but what's cool is there's enough here to identify it I mean, what, what kind of a bone do we have so here? this looks like a big duckbill tibia bone um, from a hydrosaur of the two medicine more than likely it's from a lambiosaur though that uh, is called a hypacrosaur so it's definitely big enough and um, the hypacrosaur is the largest duckbill dinosaur in the two medicine formation hands oh, wow. down. yeah they got about 35 feet long when they were a full adult okay and so they're, they're they're pretty big they're, they're they're pretty cool animals though they had a big crown coming off the top of their skull that's oh the that's so can, cool yeah, dude that's the main way you could identify them so, so. okay so so you're, you keep saying two medicine and two medicine formation. Explain yes. what that is to people. What is a formation? Oh, so the formation is a specific general area. Um, usually it can be you know four or five hundred meters thick or so, and you, you're able to trace the anticlines and the synclines back to a specific age during the dinosaur era. Um, so this one in particular is about 74.2 million years old. Um, it's, it's a pretty pretty mid Cretaceous layer. Uh, like I said, you know, eastern Montana was oceanfront, beachfront property. But this area, during the Campanian part of the Cretaceous era, or the Two Medicine, was inland. And so we have a bunch of weird little herding dinosaurs that would roam the hillsides and the swamps. So that's interesting. So mo most of the fossils that are found, mm -hmm. you know, in the, uh, you know, uh, out, out further, further uh, east of Montana, you know, those are all, you know, stuff that lived along the beaches and things Absolutely. like that. And Absolutely. there's a lot of sites like that mm -hmm. exposed. But when you get back up into here, yep. going towards west, you're kind of in the hilly, mountainous area. Exactly. And so you get a totally different different kind of oh, dinosaur absolutely. and sometimes dude that's so cool man so these these are like because you're inland that's an entirely different ecological system giving you an entirely different kind of dinosaurs that's so cool no, it's, it's very interesting and and they're very rare and just odd and there's not a lot of people that really look in these areas they look for more big open badlands you know, like the badlands you see in the Dakotas right. I guess now why say. don't why don't many people come out you know looking is it just so difficult it can be it's very difficult to know how to read read the land and as you can see it's so great green here you know it can be very difficult to even identify the badland from afar so okay so how do you identify like the site we're on how did you go about finding this site 
You just so, drive around asking. Yeah, people? A, a lot, a lot of footwork mainly. Um, okay. So you have to get in touch with the landowner. You want to get on private property, obviously. Yeah, that's. You, know, you don't want to do anything on public land. That's a big thing, um, as far as vertebrate fossils go. Um, so you want to get on private land, and you just try to make a connection with the landowners, and you, you know, just be upfront and honest with them. Be like, hey, you know, I look for fossils for a living. I have a sneaking suspicion there could be fossils on your property. Would you be okay with me coming out and prospecting? And uh, you know, most of the time, like I said, as long as you're honest with them, they, they mo most won't say no. Yeah, so, that's cool. Fantastic. So, so, so you get permission to get out on the property, and mm -hmm. then you walk around. When you walk around, like, come on, let's walk, let's walk this way, because you know, when, when I walk around and look, you know, it's just. I mean, just look, look, look around us, guys. I mean, it's just, it's crazy to see how you would figure out where stuff is at. So what would you do? Would you just walk along these hills and then look for, look for so bones popping out? What I would try to look for is a layering system. Okay. So when you start to look down the hillside here, you can see you got this big layer of rocks right here. And then you look another 20 feet down, you can see the same layer continue. Okay. So, so do you guys, you guys see this? So look what we've got right here. Okay, all right, stand right there. So we've got this layer right here that's going down like this. And then we look down a little further and we've got that other layer going down at an angle as well. So that's your, what's it, you said anticline layer? Well, this is this is a, a layer within the anticline, okay. yes. So the anticlines are a bunch of layers that are composed into a fold, I guess you could say. Okay. And the center of the anticline will always be the oldest point. Okay. Um, if we don't know the relative age, then we call it a syncline. Okay. So, but yes, yeah, so this is one of the layers within the anticline, and you just want to try to see and look at if, if it continues. Mm -hmm. So now, generally, right underneath these layers, in this case it's on top because of the way they're angled, but underneath the layers is where you're going to find dinosaur bones. Okay. You know, even when you're going through the Badlands and you see soft clay, then a hard rock line, and then soft clay, then a hard rock right. line. That hard rock line represents an age of disease, I guess you could say, for the land. Some sort of an isolated extinction had to happen at that point in time. A hurricane, a major earthquake, you know, big tsunamis can happen too, and all sorts of different cataclysms. And uh, you want to look right underneath that hard sandstone, because that's usually the extinction line where you're going to find the fossils themselves preserved. Okay. And so whenever you see a hard sandstone line like this going through the land, I get really excited. And so, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so that's when you know, like, okay, we're going to walk this line, right up against it and we're going to just look for little bits of bone popping out and if you don't see anything right up against the line then you drop down five feet and you start trying to walk the next layer and see if you find anything in the next layer and you just go that's so, so on cool. and so on and so on so okay so here's what we're going to do we're going to walk this layer with Eamon and see if we see a few things popping out and when we come back we'll we'll yeah oh this that dude dinosaur <laughs> this is so cool. cool come on dude let's go see absolutely if let's, let's go check some stuff come on out. guys all right, so we were walking along and Ty spotted something that's really cool. And here's something that, you know, a lot of people don't understand is, is dinosaur bones don't all fossil the same way. Some fossilize different than others. And there's different grades of bone. And Ty's the one that's God, dude, explain what's going on here. This so is what, This, is, this awesome. is a big bone that's blown up. I mean, 20 years ago, it would have been a great bone to collect and been able to do something with. But because it sat here and weathered, it's exploded in a million pieces and it's too far gone to put back together. But what we can do with it is because this one's interesting, there's still people that want to study this, that want to look at this and learn things from it. There's people that like fluorescent minerals and things like that. And so what we have is it's the core out of a bone. This would have been a theropod, which had a th hollow core like a bird. So that hollow core filled up with sediment part way, but then that hollow stayed hollow and it allowed crystals to form inside that hollow core. So because that's different than the bone, it was the only thing that survived when it weathered and blew up. So what we can do with this, we can take it back and clean it up. We can check with a fluorescent light and it'll probably glow and stuff. And some people will actually really still enjoy this rather than just letting it wash away and be gone forever. That's so cool. How, how, how can it glow in the dark? What's going, what, what's going on there that well, makes the different, it fluoresce? Well, different the different minerals fluoresce different under different lights. Uh, calcite is one of the ones that fluoresces. This looks like calcite by the structure of the okay. crystals. Um, uh, in the Jurassic, we had a lot of bright reds and greens, and that's uranium salts. But 
every mineral will fluoresce differently under different light. That's so cool. So, you know, that's what's important is, is, is just because, you know, a bone might be exploded doesn't mean that there's still not an awesome story to tell. Yeah, I mean, it's that's always, so it's, cool. a, it's a salvage mission a lot of times. We're trying to save what we can before it's gone. Right, exactly. Because this is another example. How many more years do you think this would have lasted? A couple more years and even these pieces would have been so small they would have washed down and washed away. I mean, if you look, this is all bone. This is all just ex totally exploded pieces of bone that there's nothing left of. And see, that's why it's important to, cut, to, to, to not let this stuff get t destroyed to let nature, because here's what nature's doing. You know, nature's helping us out, but it's also hurting us as well, because what it's doing is, is the geological forces are, are exposing these layers, allowing us to find this stuff, but it's also turning everything back into dirt. That's what nature wants to do with rocks, is it wants to take it from a big piece and break it all down to little bitty tiny particles. And these bones that are inside these layers, it's exactly what's happening. So, you know, there are, there's, all across the United States there are examples like this where there is a bone turning back into dirt and unless people are allowed to collect it and and find a you know, good use for it and get it to the right people who can study it it's just going to turn back into dirt and a huge opportunity is going to be lost as, as as far as scientific study goes and so that's why it's so awesome and important what you guys are doing out here is going out and you're recognizing this stuff and grabbing it and make sure that it gets collected and into the right hands and to me dude that's that's so cool man <laughs> god dude look there's crystals inside well, I mean, of look it at, look at it this way god, you would never so on, a, on a good bone you would have never known that existed because it wouldn't be broken open you wouldn't see the middle yeah. of that right so if you don't pick up these weathered pieces these pieces that are exploded nobody gets to study this in that's look at this. so nuts i mean okay so look at this guys see that layer see that there and right there, see the different rocks that's going on? Ty, what's going on here? So, so what it is, is it would have been sitting in the ground this way. You can actually tell. Okay. This is actually dirt. This is actually sediment, the same stuff that the, the bone was buried in. It had a hole in the bone somewhere, and it filled up that void. It's called a water line. Okay. A nice flat line where it filled up with sediment, but it still left a void at the top, and then the calcite. And then the crystals grew. The crystals grew through the fluids that came in later on. That's so cool. That's nuts, man. <laughs> Dude, you've got... That, that's a story in and of itself. It is. Yeah, it is. That's so awesome. That's so cool, man. God, that's awesome. Nice, nice save, dude. That is killer. All right, so here's here's a cool little spot we had, we had picked out, and we marked it with rocks earlier in the day. Come here and check this out. So here we've got some bone that's eroding out of the ground like this, this whole spot. There's a bone, there's a bone, the bone, 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 bone. <laughs> so, dude, that's insane, man. It's just like, bone, 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 bone. Yeah. It's all right there. You know, a lot, a lot oh, sorry, you No, ahead. go ahead, go uh, ahead, dude. A, a lot of people think when you come across a dinosaur bone, you just find a whole dinosaur bone lying on the surface and it's perfectly intact and you can just carry it up and take it home. And don't get me wrong, sometimes that does happen, but it's very few and far between. Normally, you just find these large sections and you have to trace back to where it's coming from and you find the source and you pull out the large section of the bone that's still in good condition and then we piece this stuff back together. It's kind of like an ancient puzzle, I guess you could say. It's like so. a horrible puzzle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Insane, well, absolutely. Man. But as you get deeper into the layer, this is what gives us a good sign. Hey, we need to dig right here. And as we get deeper into the layer, the bones will be a lot better preserved. They haven't been exposed to air yet. They haven't been exposed to winter, summer, rain, everything involved with the elements. And so this is just a good sign of, hey guys, we're on the right track. We got some bones on the surface here. We're gonna get a machine and start to scrape this all away and hopefully find where this is coming from. That's, all right, so when you get a spot like this, mm -hmm where you've got bone all coming out, what would you do? Would you start working into the hillside? So what we'd really want to do is try to figure out, okay, so what kind of a layer is this? So we collect all these pieces, get them out of the way, you know, make sure we don't lose any of them. Then we start to brush all of this away and try to look for symmetrical patterns in the rock itself. You want to try to see, okay, are these layers laying horizontal? You know, if they're laying horizontal, okay, then what angle are they going out for the opposite direction? So if, if they're running this way, are the layers going down at a 45 degree angle running this way? Or are they going down at a 90 degree angle running this way? And they can happen. Sometimes bones just go straight into the ground. Right. And so, which makes it difficult. You know, for every foot you go down, you got to move three foot wide. Right. You know? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's something I was curious also is, is how did these bones get here? I mean, are, are we, you know, is this, is this an ancient riverbed or is this an event? So in, or what do we got going on here? How this, is this layer here? In this particular layer, this is actually an ancient brackish swamp. 
So okay. that means it's a swamp of freshwater and salt water. So, at, so, the, so the coastal um, barrier, I guess you could say, was you know, a few hundred miles away from here. So but east. when the tide would come in, absolutely east, but when the tide would come in, it would still push a lot of these swamps and it still kind of fill up with some salt water too. So that's where you find brackish uh, oysters out here, brackish gastropods, all sorts of little invertebrates that live in both salt and fresh water. And same with, the, same with the plant life too. A lot of the dinosaurs would walk through these swamps, sometimes get stuck in the muck, and then they die and petrify, or, or not petrify, but die and preserve right there in the swamp. Or else sometimes they get attacked by a meat eater right here in the swamp too. Right, right, <laughs> so, right. so what you really want to look for to know you're in an ancient Cretaceous swamp is what's called these caliche balls here. Caliche balls are a Cretaceous sediment from swamps back in the day. So if you start to see those big balls coming out of the ground here, you know, you're, 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 in, you're in pretty good form because you're on, you're on top of a Cretaceous swamp and you could find material in there. So after you find those, you definitely want to start looking for bone chunks. <laughs> okay, so that's your, that's your key sign mm -hmm. is, is this stuff right here, these little caliche balls. Mm -hmm. And they are literally all over the place. <laughs> That is, yeah, they're pretty that's fun. so cool. That is so cool. So, all right, so you get to a spot like this, you decide you're going to dig in, mm -hmm. and you start digging in. Uh, you've got a spot that you've been working on on further on absolutely. down the hill. Absolutely. Can we, can we take everybody and go check oh, that absolutely. out? Let's go check it out. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> cool. Come on. This Let's is go do fun. it. All right, so literally there's stuff everywhere. We walked probably 20 feet. And Eamon bent down and was like, oh, yeah, there's, there's toe there. Yeah, big, <laughs> big toe. Yeah, it's, it's cool, man. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's like, it's another dinosaur bone, oh, dude. No, this is insane. It's a fantastic So piece. what's going on here? What, what What is this 20 feet away from our other so, dinosaur <laughs> that we had? We got another dinosaur right here. What the heck's going on so here? So this is the, um, looks like the distal end of a big metatarsal toe bone. This would have been running down towards the toes in a foot. Um, so the metatarsals are these big bones in the bridge of the so, foot right here. there. Absolutely. So, so dinosaurs had three of them going down and then it would lead to the little toes and eventually to the claws or the ungles basically. Okay. So this is just a big partial toe. This probably would have been to a duckbill dinosaur or a hydrosaur. Um, up here in the two medicine the hydrosaurs are either myosaur or hypacrosaur. Those are the two most popular ones. Now myosaur is an interesting species because that's the only species of dinosaur that they scientifically know for a fact cared for its young. Which absolutely. Which is pretty cool. Absolutely you're dead yeah, on. Dude science! So, that's yeah. awesome. It's, it's actually the Montana state fossil as well. Oh that's um, cool. Which is absolutely that's great. Awesome, uh, that's, yeah. that's, a, that's a very notable dinosaur for paleontology. Um, you know, to actually prove that the dinosaur had the cognitive recognition to take care of its children after birth. That is absolutely fantastic. Right, and just wasn't dumb lizards walking around that would abandon exactly. their... Exactly. That they were just... And that's what's interesting is, is you know, uh, is you've got these animals throughout these millions of years of history showing the same trait and care for their young as, you know, animals do today. That's mm -hmm. Now, I'm looking down, right down here... There, that, that's, another, that's another piece of bone. So Absolutely. that's another piece of bone, and that's another piece of bone. Absolutely, sure. That is insane, 20 <laughs> feet away from... See, this is, this is part of the greater point that we're trying to explain to you guys, is that dinosaur fossils aren't rare, they're everywhere, okay? You just gotta know where to go look. And that's what Eamon does, is, is he knows where to go look, and he goes find it, which is why there's there's... There's dinosaurs oh, here, dude. That's you know, awesome. A, a lot of people seem to think that looking for dinosaurs is reserved for a certain class of academia, I yes. guess you could say. But really, as long as you go through the proper channels, you do it on private land, and you ask permission, you know, anyone can really do it. And, and you can get really into it. And it can be a really healthy activity. And so it's, it's a lot of fun. And you bring up a very good point, is that you, you out there watching this right now, if you want to, you can go do this. You can come do this. All you've got to do is, is you've got to have the drive and the desire to want to come out here and the work ethic to want to come out here and discover this stuff. You can be anything you want to be. You want to go dig dinosaurs for a living? Like me, I don't I don't have the intelligence, to, you know, I want to be a history teacher, but I couldn't graduate from college. So I just started doing this, and now I'm teaching. So you can do the exact same thing. If you want to dig for dinosaurs, you can do this. You just got to have the drive and the desire, and you will learn along the way. And that's so cool. Oh, it's very fun. Man. It's very fun. It's... Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I think that uh, everyone has their drive. Everyone has their, you know, thing that they wish that they could be doing. There's nothing stopping you from doing it. That's there right. There really isn't. So. Yeah, see, that's, there's nothing stopping you from doing it. That's awesome. So, you know, you've got the stuff exposed up top, and you, you think, well, let's dig down. Let's see what we got. So what's the next step? You know, you're doing it by hand, and you're opening up this 
what do we got going on here? So, <laughs> this, is, this is a lot going on. So dude. what we want to try to find is a site that has the most concentration of bones on the surface. Okay. Um, this spot, hands down, for this particular ranch has been the most concentration of bones on the surface. Um, so you start at the very top of the ridge, essentially. Right. And uh, you want to look for bones that are just coming out of the ground. Um, you could either be a large chunk, or else it could be a large section of a limb just popping on the ground. Right. And you start to expose it. And so you're going in by hand and mm -hmm. just pick and shovel and just cutting down absolutely into it. absolutely and you know here's something wild if you look you can see this this whole ridge line this whole formation look look across here guys you see that patch over there that's a continuous of the formation you see that next ridge beyond it that's a continuous of the form so it's this layer is still going that is insane so all right so you're in hand you're picking it by hand What's and, and you get when do you get to the point where it's just like, dude, I'm, I need I need the big guns. So the layers will kind of dive and dip differently in the hillside. So in this case, the hill is at an angle like this, but the layers come down at an angle like this. So once you start to remove this overburn up top, for every foot you want to go down, you got to move everything off the back too. And so in this case, you can see where we've moved everything down by hand, you know, and then the layer itself is starting to dip really heavily into the hillside itself. So we need to get machinery in here to start to expose all of this and they start to expose the good bones that have been deeply preserved underground for a long, long right, time. Right. And I'm they'll sorry. be better quality bone, right? Absolutely, they'll be much okay. better quality bone, absolutely. So, so then your next step is is to call somebody like Ty. Absolutely. Ty, come I'm on here, come here for a second. So so you're, you, you call Ty and be like, dude, I've, I've hit a spot, I, I, I need some big guns, will you, what? And, and then you call Ty up and Ty shows up, what do you do? Well, I've just, I've just had a lot more experience running equipment, is basically all I'm doing. Um, I mean, we're going to study this, look at it. I mean, you can see the layers going in at 25 degree angle. Yeah. So as that goes in, you can see how much dirt he's pulled off by hand already. Right. But if he wants to go a foot deeper here, He's got to dig a foot deep all the way out there right. in order to go a foot deeper. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a backhoe. We're going to come in here. And we're going to pull all that overburden off 10, 12 feet down. So he's got a great big clean shelf that he can work on and then peel that layer off okay. as he goes down. And it's just like pages of book. Then he'll be able to open these pages of the book and just keep and, going, and, keep going and, and follow those in without having to spend two days shoveling for one page. Right, exactly. So it'll, and, just speed, it'll just speed the whole process up. And, and that's basically how, if you're going to quarry anything, no matter what fossil yeah, is, that's pretty much what you do. Yeah, right? it's, I mean, yeah, you've got to get the overburden off. I mean, there's always dirt that you don't want that doesn't have anything in it. Right. Um, that you need to get out of the way. And there's, I mean, there's other things that you have to watch out for when we're doing that. I mean, we try to be good land stewards. We don't want to make a big runoff mess. We don't want a bunch right. of overburden and silt and stuff washing down in the creek. There's a beautiful little creek down here. We're going to build a little catch basin to catch all that. And in 20 years from now, the farmer will love us because that's going to be the greenest spot on the whole mountain. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, taking care of the rancher is first priority. Well, it's, it's, it's like anything. When you're on private property and, and you're out there doing this, you know, you want to take care of them. I mean, it's just, it's, it's what you do. It's Absolutely. just being good people. Absolutely. So, all right, well, we're going to let you guys get to work. We're going to, we're going to be here for a couple days and we'll kind of show you guys the progress. Amen, I mean, this is insane, dude. So what do we got going on here? Why, you know, we, we, we've been down there working on that spot down there. We kind of changed tactics, moved up here. Yep, yep. What do we got going on? There's a bone here. Absolutely. That's nuts, dude, it's so cool. So this is a really big bone. The uh, proximal end actually looks like it came off. We have the proximal end, we just don't have it here for the, for the shot yet. Um, but uh, this is a big ulna bone. It's a lower arm bone to a hypacrosaur dinosaur. Um, Hypacrosaur is a big lambiosaur, it's a duckbill dinosaur. They got about 35 feet long here in the Two Medicine. They're absolutely huge and really nice dinosaurs. They have a big crown crest on the top of their head. Oh, that's cool. So this is actually where we found a partial skeleton. Um, the skeleton consisted primarily of the pelvic bones and the upper tail and then a little bit of the lower limb bones. So it's really nice to see that now we're getting into the front limb bones. Hopefully we're going to find more of this. And if you look right here, you can see, y'all you know, you, you can oh, come in on this. Awesome. Come in on this. So we got another bone going in right here. This looks like a process to a vertebrae probably, and then the centrum disc should be somewhere within this rock. So count our lucky stars, we came back to this site to excavate once more, because there should be a lot more of this animal That's here yet. That's awesome, yeah, dude. So it's, it's great. Can you tell which way it's facing? Is it facing face down? Well, you know, the... from what we've seen so far, the tail is actually running down this way okay. primarily, and right where you're at, 
is where we had big sacrum verts. That's the vertebrae that sit on top of the pelvic bones. Yeah. And so we removed all those guys out. We just didn't go down far enough, apparently. So that's why this stuff is always worth coming back and checking. That's it's always so worth coming back to. Freaking even, cool. even when you think you're done, you're not done. And then when you think you're done that time, you're still not done. <laughs> so <laughs> it's always worth coming back to. All right, guys. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to bring you guys out to what Eamon is trying to complete over at the other site, 30 miles away. So this, this, this is what a dinosaur quarry looks like and what he's trying to get together over there with the backhoe and the equipment and everything like that. So what's your, what's your goal here, dude? What, what do we got going on? So what we have is about 20 feet total of some pretty massive overburden. It's a lot of freshwater sediment that got washed in from the glacial movements. Okay, so, so we want to get this, all this right up here. Yep, is absolutely. all the overburden. Okay. Absolutely. So we want to work way down below that to the yellow layers. That's an iron stone. That iron is a really slow moving river channel. We won't really find much material in that. So we got to go even deeper than that to the hard iron rock that you see all sorts of little pebbly rocks in. That shows really high energy. A really big massive flash flood had to come through here and washed a lot of dinosaurs into like a log jam deposit, I guess you could so say. Like, so like stuff like this down here. See this pebbly stuff down here? This is what he's going for, all right? This is evidence where you had a big wash down come in and bring down gravel and bigger river sediment and also bones as well. Absolutely, and you can see the difference in the upper layer right above it. It gets super soft, no pebbles whatsoever. Nothing so, here, yeah. nothing there. Yeah. So what kind of geologic event is going on? That was more than likely a big flash flood, honestly. And so millions and millions and millions of gallons of water came washing in all at once and just took out herds and herds and herds of dinosaurs for miles, actually. Really? Yeah, it's pretty interesting. So what we do is we split these rocks into layers, and as you flip the rock, you look underneath of it, you look for the impression of the bone, if not the actual bone itself. Okay, and so, okay. And sometimes you can flip it, and there's a big hole, a big hole limb bone like a femur or a tibia. Sometimes, Dude, that's sometimes awesome. Sometimes there's just big teeth and claws. I mean, there can be all sorts of really good stuff in these rocks. Yeah. I mean, it is absolutely fantastic. Nice. So, and so you're yeah. hoping to so so when you chisel and pop on it, you get stuff like this. Absolutely. Right? Yep, yep. Check this out, guys. This is what he's going for. That is dinosaur bone in the rock right there, and you see all the gravelly river sediment stuff around it. Like Eamon was saying, you know, that's evidence of a giant flash flood that 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 came down at that time and washed everything, everybody, ah, and covered everybody up. And so millions and millions of years, how many millions of years are we dealing this with? 74.2 million years 74.2 million years later, Eamon's out here, he's prospecting on this. Look, that's a drop off. That is, that is insane. <laughs> crazy down there so he's scampering on the ledges and stuff looking for these this gravelly pebble layer and once he finds it he comes in with machinery like we're doing over the other side and he's taking all that 20 feet of overburden off to get down to this layer right here and then popping it open and then you get dinosaur bones is that not so freaking cool god it's awesome man this is how dinosaur bones are discovered you know, it's not like, you know, out in the middle and it's just you walk and pfft, there's a whole dinosaur. It doesn't happen like that, you know. Most dinosaurs that you see in museums and stuff, you know, they're put together, you know, that whole skeleton is put together from many, 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 many different animals. Same species, but many different animals. You know, a leg here, arm there, and they put it all together. Very rarely do you get the entire skeleton mm -hmm. laying out. So what Eamon's doing is, is he's going and he's hunting for, you know, these isolated bones. Um, and that's what he's doing over at the other site. So he walked around and that's what we showed you earlier. He walked around, he saw where there was good stuff coming out and he wanted to create the same situation he's got here over there where you take all the overburden off and then all you've got is, is you, you're literally walking on these pebbly layers and you just, oh, cool. That's how it goes, man. That's so awesome, yeah, dude. That's so cool, oh, it's man. Of fun. It is absolutely fantastic. You never know what you're gonna find. It is yeah. literally like hunting treasure. Yeah, so, Dude, every yeah, day, man. Know. That so. is awesome. All right, so we're out here. We came to another place that Eamon's got opened up out here. What do we got going on, dude? What's what? What kind of site is this? Well, so this site has actually been pretty newly discovered. Um, this looks like it's turning into a little bit of a micro site. Um, so what's finding... micro site mean? So a micro site is when you find smaller remains of the dinosaurs, little toes, little vertebrae, little teeth. It's usually a channel. Um, some sort of a smaller river flow that deposited everything in between like a sandbar, I guess you right, would say. Right, right. Um, so you find a lot more of the sort of smaller enamel pieces. Okay. So, um, so yeah. what, what, 
Tony pick up? There? So in this case, our close friend Tony, she found a beautiful, beautiful ungle. This is a foot claw to a hydrosaur dinosaur. Ah, it's, so yeah, it's just so out it's of this like world. So it's like on the side right there. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, so you got the foot here, and it's that little thing coming off the side. Well, it right would have there. been would have been one of the claws coming to the front, essentially. Oh, okay, so it could have yes. been placed anywhere in the very front of the foot. Okay. And so, so these are just absolutely. This is out of this world. This is this is one of the best ones I've ever seen. I mean, this That's is just fantastic. Awesome. More Tony than rocks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, more than likely. Um, there's only two real hydrosaurs out here, and one is actually a lambiosaur. Um, that's the hypacrosaurus that you saw in the other videos that we're digging on the other site. Um, this looks very hydrosaur claw, um, so, or, or ungle, so I'd have to dare to say this is from a myosaur. That's the Montana State dinosaur, nice. Latin for mother lizard. It's the only dinosaur we can prove yeah. took care of its young after birth. And so it's cool species, man. Pretty dang cool. That's so yeah. cool. Now yeah. You're also finding stuff like teeth out here, and we yeah. picked, I picked this guy up. Now here's the thing about, you know, because dinosaurs, you know, were like sharks. Mm -hmm. They shed their teeth. Absolutely. So that's kind of one of the reasons why, you know, you can come out and you can find just as many dinosaur teeth is because just like sharks, they shed their teeth, which is insanely cool. Oh yeah, cool. absolutely. So what did I find here? So this is a beautiful, beautiful raptor tooth. It's a raptor tooth! <laughs> and this is actually hands down one of the larger ones I've seen come out of the Two Medicine Formation, especially on this ranch in particular. Um, there's oh, a you guys gotta see it. Look at this. It's a raptor tooth. It's a raptor tooth. That's so cool. It's a raptor tooth. <laughs> That's so awesome, man. Look at the serrations going down the back. That is insane. God, if, if I were here 70 million, this thing could eat me. That's so cool, dude. Yeah. So what what species is it? What's that species' well, deal? I would, is it like what you see in the movies? There, there's, there's only a couple of raptor species here in the Two Medicine, and they're nothing like what you see in the movies. Yeah. Um, most raptors are actually feathered. Uh, and what we see in Hollywood isn't quite accurate. Um, so the, the, the bigger species of raptor that comes out of the Two Medicine is called a Sar Ornitholestes. It's a really long name. Um, they stood about three and a half, four feet tall and they were completely feathered. Totally <laughs> covered with feathers. Totally covered in feathers. Dude, that's so cool, so, man. That, this, this is something special you got here, Chase. Cool. Good good job. Good well, no, dude, thank you for having us out oh, on hey. your site, man. Hey, this, is, this is so great. It's a freaking raptor tooth. That's yeah. so cool, man. That's it, it's here. This is a raptor toe. No. Yeah, you can see the indentations on either side. So that would let up, that's, that could be metatarsal, but I think that's actually a lower toe. And then in the other one here, that is a huge carnivore tooth. Oh man, tooth. that is nuts. That's Look just how part of it. It's missing big tip. that is. But that would have... Oh wow. my gosh. That, 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 that's probably from a Dasplitosaurus. It's too big to be from the other carnivores out that's here. That's cool. We'll be hunting um, for the Dasplitosaurus is a close relative of Tyrannosaurus rex, as you know. Oh, so. that's <laughs> awesome. Not literally 30 seconds after we just left you guys, this showed back up. So we're going to go find some more stuff. Ah! So, Eamon, what's going on here? We've got like an entirely new hole. There, there, there's a hole back that away that we were working on, yep, yep, and then absolutely. we stopped, and then we went, and, and, and we're gophering. What's yep. going on? <laughs> so we, we pulled, a couple of years ago, we pulled a partial hypacker source skeleton out of this site. Um, the new site is just maybe a quarter mile, eighth of a mile down the way here. Um, but we came back to this old site here to see if there's any more of this animal. And we're actually having quite a bit of luck. Uh, the other day we found an ulna, that's a lower arm bone, and the start of a big rib. So we decided to get machinery back in this spot, really open nice. it up and start trying to figure out where this layer runs and find more of this animal. <laughs> and we're having a lot of luck actually. Um, so was, was the digging on the old site just a little bit too difficult for the machinery that we had? Or so far just... right now it has yeah. been difficult. We're trying to carve into the entire mountainside to make like a 15 foot wall. So we can just pop rocks off that wall and yeah. uncover bones. We're starting to realize though that the further deep you go, the more concrete that stuff becomes. Ow. I um, mean, this layer in particular, so what we're going to do instead is take the machine and attack it from the very top and, you know, just go from the top down instead nice. and try that. Now, that, that can be a little bit more time consuming because as you find a bone, you have to stop, you know, just dig it all out and then you can keep going. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, you know, what you've got is, is you've got to utilize the time that you've got. So, you know, you're attacking a spot and you hit rougher rock that's in it that you can't really get to it. you got to take some time, step back and see another way to attack that spot like that site over there we were... We first started filming, so, so he knew he found a whole dinosaur here at one point, and he wanted to come back and see what the rest of it was there. So we popped over, came here, popped the hole, and finding all, dude, finding all kinds of stuff, man. Come here, let me show you what what our cameraman Isaac pulled out of the ground. 
Ty, what do we got here? What a vertebra. It's a nice vertebra. A couple pieces were broken on it when it pops out, which is not unusual. I mean, there's always fracturing in the ground. That's awesome. So what species is this? Is this the same species as what you were yep, digging before? Yep. So this is the rest of the animal. Yep, that's part, part of the skeleton it, yep. there. Only got about 250 to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How much more is in here? Um, you know, honestly, this, this might sound kind of silly, but we mostly found the butt last time. Uh, it's all the pelvic bones, the upper tail, and the lower back. So it's so, all going down into the yeah, mountain. So it's all basically. running this way and going straight down too. Nice. So we have a lot more ribs to find. We have nice. a lot more lower tail vertebrae, all the neck vertebrae. Right um, now, right now we've got limbs. four bones exposed that you okay. can see. Most dinosaurs, when you find them, they're just a big jumble pile of bone. You know, they get washed into a spot. You know, you might find a femur up into the rib cages. You never know. Um, but in this case, it's semi-articulated. The bones are mostly flipped upside down. And we're seeing lower tail in a certain section, lower back in a certain section, upper body in a certain section. But there are a few bones that kind of float away here and there, too. Yeah. So. You know, what's interesting about this site that you've got out here is, is you've got multiple opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know, you get hung up in one spot, you can go check out another spot. Absolutely. If you get hung up in that spot, you can go and walk around on the surface and pick up on the surface. Absolutely. I mean, dude, this is an awesome freaking site. Is this the way the two medicine normally is? You know, the two medicine is very hit and miss. Um, 90% yeah. of the bones are found in what's called the upper formation of the two medicine. And uh, there is layers that are indeed mass mortality. So that's what we're really after is trying to find a site that's a mass mortality site where you just find a bunch of different bones from a bunch of different species. Now mass mortality, would that have been caused by, you know, a flood yep. or in, in, in this, comet yep, or... In this case, it's a ma <laughs> in this case, it's a massive, massive freshwater flood. Okay. It's a big one, a really big one that wiped out probably a good 100 square miles or so. Oh, wow. And so it was a big one. They have so. any idea what caused those giant floods? You know, I mean, surely it, it, it can't it's, be the same as what's going on today. Because exactly. otherwise, there'd be... It's really hard to say. Um, it could have been tsunami, which that wouldn't be fresh water, but it could have been a really bad uh, hurricane that came through, especially since, you know, the, the ocean front at this point in time was only a couple hundred miles to the east of us. You know, and that's an interesting point. You know, they, 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 during this time, the entire center part of the continent of the United States was, was where the ocean came up through. So, yeah, it could have been, yeah, yeah, it could have been, it hurricane, been a hurricane it, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, absolutely. Who knows? I mean, it, there's a lot of different things at play here for what could have brought in just a massive flash flood. So what we're uncovering right now is a few different bones here. They're, they're down there working right now on lower tail vertebrae and rib sections. That's going to be the lower half of the body. Um, we did find big sacrum vertebrae. That's this vertebrae that sit right on top of the pelvic bones, right on top of the butt. And then uh, we found all the, a bunch of different pelvic bones down there too. And as we've gone up this way, we found more ribs and dorsal vertebrae. Those are lower back vertebrae. And the processes on those stand straight up. So that's how you can tell what part of the back you're on is based on the processes if they're up at 90 degree angle or start tapering down the tail into 45 degree angles. And then heading up even further into this way, we found more dorsal processes. We got some server bone right here. We found an ulna. And then right here, we're working on a scapula. So that should be right up into the breast area. And we're really hoping that this is going to bring us that much further to finding the neck and then the skull. And so, so which direction do you think the neck and the skull is going? I think the neck and the skull are going to be this way. Yeah, and I think they're going to be kind of downward and hopefully tucked underneath the animal in what's called the like dive the, position. Like the, you know, and that's where the neck curls up into the body a little bit. So, so are you going to work all that by hand or with the, or the, with the machine? You know, right now we're going to do it by hand. As soon as we get this bone out, this bone out, and that bone out, we're going to start to excavate a little bit further with machines and whatnot and try to see if this is actually going up the hill further or if it's going to be going down into the hill. So it's a little bit of a guessing game right now, but we're thinking it's going to be going this way. So. Nice. Well, good luck, brother. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Make sure there's not another bone. Yeah, I just want to make sure if there's no other bone, right? Let me move my foot to where we are. And if I need to scoot my ass, I can do that too. We're all right. Oh, shit. See all the bones yeah, yeah, moving? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta get all this dirt back. Yeah, Those dirt, dirt. You gotta get away from the hole. Where's that piece go? Find them in like sand and stuff? Or like yeah, the bone that's down there. Oh! That's it. That's what I'm trying to do is pop it loose. Do you have them on you? No, it tastes like it is. It's just keyed in.
Alright, I think I got a good gap here. My legs is it makes it very difficult to move, but, but I know I'm in your way. I know I just can't see if you can't bend correctly. Vertebrae attaches there, so it's the top process of the vertebra. It's a little flag that sticks up on top. It's hard to hold it all together. And then it was naturally eroded off the top, missing off the top right there. We still have the front zags to get out. Alright, so it's much later in the day. This hole is expanded out like crazy. Ty's been backhoeing it like mad. And Eamon's been working on his bone, and he's got it totally exposed. What, dude, what do we got going on here? This is, it's, you, it's right there, it's so cool. So this is a big hypacrosaur um, scapula. That's a front collarbone, basically on the front side of the chest. Same species and, that what we've been dealing with, yep, or is this absolutely. another guy? No, this okay. is the same species. So this is really big. So this is a pretty fun bone. Come here and check this out, guys. Look at this. That is insane, it's so cool. It's a Dinosaur! You can't get any close to a dinosaur than this, man. That is nuts. So what'd you do to once you found the bone? What was the process? Well, we just get saw, this out. We just saw this itty bitty little top sticking out here that's been okay. eroded away a little bit. Um, so that's gonna have to be prepped and touched up here. But you just slowly have to work away this loose shale. Uh -huh. um, and it's it's a it's a it's a bit of a process. Um, the bone itself can't move, so you have to work all the rock from in front of it away first, and work up to the rock on the bone. Now, why can't the bone move? Because it's just that it has, fragile. It has these natural fractures okay. going through it, so you don't want to extort those any further essentially okay. you, you want to keep those as they are otherwise you risk damaging the bone the more you move those fractures the more they start to break and crumble right. and then it just weakens the joint part and then it, it also just kind of uh, makes it more difficult to prep up so God, this is nuts man so what's your next what's your next process well the next step is to do what's called a pedestal we're going to go around all of this and knock about an inch off inside okay. here all around the entire bone. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and wrap it up in foil and then make a nice burlap jacket with a hydrocal plaster. Okay, so you're going to jack it up and plaster it? Yep, yep, absolutely. And so. what does that plaster jacket do? What's the purpose of it the, besides just getting the bone out? Oh, no, the plaster jacket keeps it steady in place so it won't move whatsoever when it's inside the jacket ideally. Okay. And, so, and then that way it makes it safer for transportation, keeps the whole bone in articulation as it is. It's just a, a good move to keep it nice and protected. Nice. So. All right, Eamon, what's your first step here? Your first step is aluminum foil. This protects the bone from any kind of plaster, like the gypsum and whatnot. Okay. It's, not, it's really not too hard to get off the bone, but you know, you might as well put it. You're a nice layer of some thick foil here real quick. Then we're gonna go ahead and start doing that gypsum plaster. Nice, nice. So you pull it. And that creates a barrier between the plaster and the bone that can easily come off. Exactly. Exactly. Go right off. Now we gotta cut this burlap. Um, this is the burlap itself. Okay. So it's a nice, strong, stretchy burlap. Just standard burlap. Yeah, if it's porous, so when, it's, when the gypsum plaster hits it, it'll fill in all the cracks and this will harden with it. So that's why they use burlap and not other, any other material. Yeah, you know what really works well is old coffee bean bags. Oh. So if you have a roastery nearby, they work really well. <laughs> so you just cutting them into strips? Yeah, I cut them into big long strips about, I don't know, two and a half, three feet long or so, and about 10 inches, eight inches wide. So it's a little bit of a lengthy process with a knife, scissors work a lot better, but it still works. Now how many layers of burlap will you put on? Oh, for this one, honestly, just one or two. Okay. Now, for a big, thick bone, we'd use five, six, seven. Sometimes we'd even do a piece of rebar on it yeah. to reinforce it. But in this case, the bone's so light, it's just really heavy on one end. We'll really jack at the one end, do a nice light jacket on the other. Nice. So, yeah, nice. it's gonna be fun. I'm excited. Cool. So we're mixing a uh, hydrocal plaster. It's a gypsum-based plaster, like the stone gypsum. So it sets really hard, really quickly. So you gotta keep it in motion if you don't want it to set up. So what you do is you wanna mix it. Come here and look at this real quick. You want to mix it to where it gets nice and nice and soupy and gloppy. Nice. But if it's too watery, it, it won't set very quickly and it gets a little difficult to work with. Nice. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, fun stuff. <laughs> so after you get it mixed up like that, start soaking the burlap in it? Yep, absolutely. We'll roll the burlap into it and make each strip basically just covered in it and then we'll slab it on the bone there and we'll start to sculpt it and let it dry for about 20 minutes and we'll flip the bone out of the matrix there. So, so now we got the burlap here. We're Hydrocal plaster. We're gonna go ahead and put it on the bone on top of that foil there. 
So the plaster picks up a lot of it, so you don't want to waste it. So you got to wring it out and make sure it gets into every single pore in the plaster. You catch all the access in your bucket there. Nice and opened up. Try not to splatter it all over the place if you can. This is the messiest part of paleontology, I think. <laughs> Next to gluing. Put it on the jacket here. Now this one already covers most of the bone here, so I don't have to make too big of a jacket, luckily. And do you gotta wait for each layer to dry? No, we can lay it on top of itself and let it all dry up at the same time. Then you wanna go ahead and sculpt it and mold it to fit on the bone. I'm trying to cup it all around it so it kind of cups the bone. Make sure it's nice and flush up against it. There's no pockets or anything where the bone could crack and crumble. All right, one down and three or four to go. <laughs> so how do you know how many layers of plaster you need no, to honestly, do? Honestly, you just kind of do it by feel. Um, heavier ends of the bone need more plaster. You know, ideally, you know, like paleontol like academic paleontologists would make it into just one big blob, basically, and they take probably more matrix matrix with it than I would. And so, so they use a lot of a lot of plaster, so and a lot of different jacketing material. But <laughs> so you just kind of do it by feel, based on parts of the bone you know are weak, parts of the bone you know are heavier than other parts of the bone that would risk snapping, you know. So and just really reinforce everything as best as you can. So is this the same method that's been around since the beginning of paleontology? This has been around for a long time, this method. You know, some paleontologists back, way back in the day actually used dynamite to get bones out of the ground. <laughs> uh, so there definitely has been some primitive methods for a very long time, but they've, started, they've obviously come around for a while now. You know, that's pretty wild to think that the exact same method to wrap dinosaurs when all this started out is still being used today. Mm -hmm. Isn't that nuts? That is pretty wild, actually. I don't actually. know if gypsum-based plaster existed back then. I'm sure that something very close to it did. Yeah. But I'm sure that they used something very similar. And so and they used burlap to make these big jackets. You can see old historical photos of them. Nice. It's just massive, massive jackets. <laughs> it's cool. Nice. See the bone underneath here? Make sure you don't want to make sure you didn't lose any corners. Yep. Yeah. Got it all. Got it nice. all. Nice. Perfect. Just pop just like that. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm going to clean this over or underburden off here and expose some of this bone. So when you get it back, you'll prep it all out in the jacket. Well, what we'll start doing is getting all this underburden off here to expose the bone itself. Mm -hmm. Then we'll take a Dremel tool and cut this entire jacket off, then flip it over and get a, get the jacket out of there, and then the real prep can begin. Put some glue so, in this areas that are fragile. You can see see the tree roots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this they is pretty common. Havoc. These plants will attack this. This is several feet under the ground, and you can see this web of roots. Yep. That was eating into that bone. So really in a couple of years, I mean, even if even that. They don't even make it to the surface before they're breaking up. Yeah, yeah. they're already broken. They're yeah. already breaking up before they hit the surface. Between the freeze thaw and the plants and the rodents and everything else, they, they get broke up real fast. Yeah. So we've been fortunate enough and blessed enough to have Eamon tote us all over the sites that he's got going on in Montana. 
And dude, we, we started up this process. We wanted to show you guys what it was like when a fossil quarry gets opened up and the whole process of you know discovering dinosaur bones and everything like that and it, it, it was interesting as heck because you know we started in A and we ended up with B and we got all kinds of cool C and I mean it was just all over the place and that's kind of really what fossil hunting is. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you have to expect the unexpected. A lot of things don't go according to plan so you just have to adjust and you know kind of figure it out I guess you could yeah. say. So. <laughs> but you know what's neat about you know you you had found a dinosaur here mm -hmm. you know a, a large part of a skeleton we'd started off kind of trying to open a spot down over there hit some really hard rock said well let's go check out just check to just check it out yeah and we found out that this dirt was so awesome and smooth and loose and so chock full of bones I mean you've got you've got this huge awesome hump full of nothing but dinosaur bones to dig now absolutely you know? yeah and absolutely and as it weathers out it should get softer and softer and easier to process through that's so. so cool dude well hey listen I really want to thank you for having us along oh, absolutely thank you guys. I really appreciate it Thank you guys for tuning in. Just remember, how do you know where you're going unless you know where you've been? It's in studying and understanding the mistakes of the past that prevent the failures of the future. Be sure to like and subscribe to the video that you see here. Check us out on Facebook at Chasing History uh, and on YouTube at the channel you're at. ever be on Twitter. Twitter is evil. It's awful. It's bad. Bad Twitter. It's never. <laughs>